and welcome to another episode of Sip and Chat. So tonight we will be discussing the other side of rape culture. You know, um, we'll be breaking the silence of that male trauma. For male victims, the social paradigm surrounding rape is skewed, uh, really, and uh, very heavily actually. And it brings with it a unique challenge, right? There are a lot of misconceptions. Males can't be harassed. Males can't be victims. Women never perpetuate sexual violence. Um, I mean, everybody doesn't agree with that, and that is what we'll be discussing this evening. But before we get into the conversation, I'm not sure how many of you would have seen the viral video a few weeks ago showing a young man being held down by two women, one holding his hands and the other on top of him fondling his genitals. Um, this was to them amusing, and I guess the onlookers, you know, they were they were encouraging it. They were like, you know, relax and let it happen. Um, I mean, he looked uncomfortable. I, to me, he looked uncomfortable, and you know, I don't think that this was something that he would have approved. We'll see that it was recorded, so that just makes it even more embarrassing. So, my question to you all guys tonight is: um, Why do the authorities or, or people in general do not treat male rape? or sexual assault victims with the same, you know, enthusiasm as female, their female counter, as our female counterparts, you know. Why is it downplayed or taken as a joke by society? Why Why do you all think so? Well, um, I think firstly, a lot of people look at the physical aspect, you know, they like biology and physically men naturally supposed to be bigger and stronger than women and a lot of rape is, is about the power play aspect so i think a lot of people look at it in that aspect and I, I, the, next, oh. the next thing is um some people go see that as being a man just see that sex they wouldn't see that as rape you know you know the, the, the emotional side but if you cry you know i just change it if you cry they'll say you're being you're being gaily so you know just be a man kind of thing that that's where a lot of people look at it as and that would come from our upbringing our parents or our peers, they would see that as being a man, you're getting sex, you know, be a man, take it, that, that small thing. But hmm. really not like that. <laughs> wow, that... that. That's, a, that's, a scary, that's a scary way to look at it, boy, because yeah. um, in terms of that, that video in particular, I mean, the youth man was helpless, eh? helpless. Mm-hmm. Like he was pinned, his hands were being held behind him, and the woman on top of my I picture myself in that position now. I ain't think they take any time and we've been really here to put on any any prophylactic, any condom, anything like that. And she's there trying to get his penis erect and insert it into her genitals. And by just thinking, I don't know this woman, you know, what about STIs, STDs? That was a serious rape, in my opinion, caught on camera. Scary, very scary. Which way do you think would happen if that youth man now go by the, the nearest police station and say they just try to rape him? What do you think would be the outcome with that? It depends on the officer who he approaches. Some officers, you know, we believe that much of most of the officers have been trained in witness, in victim, well, victim support. So they should be able to apply the rules equally to men and to women. And as such, they should be able to take his testimony or take his report and apply the rules. So, recent, so recently, if I'm not mistaken, right, there was there was a unit formed especially for for uh, that's what that would be what gender gender violence gender violence, yes. gender violence yes. right? Um, anybody anybody's aware as to how much focus they paid? With regards to men in that in that unit, I don't, uh, not sure. I don't know. Answer, but answer, um, so from no what problem. I've seen, they've been what pretty active in the last few weeks. So they've actually taken reports of domestic violence seriously, and they have arrested offenders. It is my belief that if a man comes forward, if he has been physically assaulted or sexually assaulted he should get as equal attention as the other person. So then it's safe to say that, that in 2020, we actually have a change in equality where that is concerned. Yes. From the law, from the law side of things. Because I have heard so many times where men, 
either decided that they're not going to the police station because them police will laugh at me or they went and the report was not taken because they were like boy go back home to your wife is a man or a mouse you know that kind of thing same thing yeah. that Kibel, um kevin was saying but since Kibel came, Kibel came out of my tongue there Kibel, what's your view on this boy i'm used to be yeah i tend to agree with the biology of it um because of social expectations based on cultural norms um perpetuated by society culturally shrouded in tradition it's like there's a, a heavy skewing that men can't be the victim because of their their physical power so that they think that if a man is being sexually assaulted by a woman is because he wanted it if he didn't want it he would stop it uh, you understand so i think as kevin i think was saying as well about if he's a man or a mouse and police will catch kicks you have to understand too that the police are human beings as well and they have been conditioned in the same society so when they get a report from a male talking about a female sexually assaulting them to them it's just as ludicrous as what were you talking about so they will find it funny as well so the yeah, skewing go ahead they, they're not supposed to be um well they're supposed to go through some form of training because i don't consider them as the ordinary citizen you know they're supposed to go through some level of training or some level of, of service agreed but like, even though they are trained they still have their their, their own personal beliefs because men yeah. are often pressured to behave a certain way they are often pressured into hype for masculine stereotypes where they are told that they have to dominate women and that coupled with toxic masculinity is a dangerous cocktail because when you think about hyper masculinity and men thinking that they have to dominate women men are also taught on the next hand that they shouldn't hit a woman so if they are ever put into a compromise or awkward position where they are being assaulted it kind of psychologically render themselves defenseless that they're not supposed to hit a woman but are supposed to be dominating her and it's a psychological thing where they just be submissive and then they'll be quiet about it after for fear of ridicule so then so so why it is when a man uh, confesses either being raped or molested or something like that met they you question the man's you know masculinity what what is what is that about why why is it that we because part of masculinity a tenet of masculinity is that you're supposed to be strong you're supposed to be able to defend yourself you're supposed to be able to protect people so somebody especially a female who is often deemed to be the fear of sex taking advantage of you kind of goes against the grain of what you're supposed to be as a man yeah but the, at the same time Kerbel, they are saying not to hit women don't rough them up don't be aggressive and that's even, exactly even, in, even, in, even in simple conversation yeah, or hard argument, if you raise your voice too much at a woman, all of a sudden she's like, "What are you getting so aggressive for?" But you're trying to make a point, so it, it's, it's the same thing. It's like, okay, pick a side. Where are you woman to do? You want to be a man, man, or exactly you're my to... point. So against a female attacker, uh, as opposed to a woman who is when she's being sexually assaulted, who will kick and scream and shout. A man wouldn't do that because he, have, he has already been told that you're not supposed to hit. You're not supposed to do this as a man. As a man, you're supposed to be. So that's the problem right there. Yeah, you're not supposed <laughs> to show weakness. And if you can't protect yourself, then what kind of man you really is? So then, so then what about the man that fights back, though? Is he wrong in that situation? That brings a whole different dynamic into the thing. Because now, if you go to the police and you say, I was sexually assaulted, and they ask you, so you didn't hit Chiba? Well, yeah, hit Chiba. Well, you ain't Gary. What is the man to do then? Yeah. yeah. How, how do we, how do we, how do we, how do we, I, I remember a time in Shabwara's mirror that women have this way that is provoking and men just want to do the right thing, you know. I remember this man, a woman behind him, blah, 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 blah. Say, girl, leave me alone, you know. He walk off. She behind him because she got audience now, so she bad. Blah, 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 blah. He said, girl, leave me alone. My lady pushed my boy head and he spit wrong and hit her one right hook. You know, everybody was on the man case. Oh, you gonna do that? Da, 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 da. And the same thing does happen in the same in the instance of sexual assault. When they yeah. go to the police station, it's heavily skewed and that's how you started off in this session. Well, as you, as you mentioned, the police station again, they could well. I'll put police hat for a little, a little bit. 
And I'm thinking, in terms of investigating that crime, we have now the advent of the rape kits, where we can actually prove, yes, this woman was sexually assaulted, right? But how, how could they prove really that a man was sexually assaulted? I mean, I'm, I'm thinking they would have to see some kind of physical, physical proof, you know? So, so even so even the science against us. Kevin, <laughs> in that regard, like the guy, the guy who um, Keon was talking about in the beginning, who was on video, it was a viral video, and he was held up by these two strong women because right. that is a fallacy that women, men stronger than women, and it's a woman who who train in the gym stronger than the average man. So they hold yeah. him down, right? And he couldn't move, and he's saying if you could have seen man visibly upset. Right, and people get them one one to you by relax, relax. Think about it because the other way around, and two men holding on a woman, a, a woman. Ah. Sorry. You could hear any crowd saying relax okay. now, guilty. Okay. And that's what they're talking about. So the video evidence, when you go to the police station and say, officer, look, the hole in the gang. You know what the officer going and say? And I, I might be wrong, but I generalizing still. So you make them two girl hold you down by. As Sparrow say, what can you tell him to do? Both of them. That's <laughs> But yeah, reality, so even our the police, yeah. exactly, it's the culture. If the police really want to, I mean, if they have to do the investigation, they will look, of course, at the witness statements. In that case, they had the incident recorded on film, so they have that. They have marks of marks of violence. If they have to hold him down, if they have to restrain him, stuff like that. But you know, it's a kind of slippery slope. So how do we change? Changing that. That's what yeah. I'm thinking now. <laughs> how do we change well, like, that? To change that? You're talking about changing our whole culture, you know, because remember well, yeah. growing up, we always thinking that men are the aggressors. When we see a, a, a lady we like, you know, we will reach out to her, you know, things like that. But now we're seeing a paradigm shift of sorts where women are becoming a little more aggressive on the dating front, right? So that to change that, you actually have to think about the whole mindset of the dating game. Who is really supposed to be the aggressor? Who's supposed to be the one to say, you know, yes, I will go out with you or no, I will go out with you? Who's supposed to ask the question, things like that? Yeah, but I, I believe the culture has already started to change. And I think if we look at a lot of women now feel empowered and feel strong, per se, you know, may not be like physically stronger than a man, but they feel like they have more of a voice. And a lot of women are more aggressive than, than a lot of men, where, where the, as you say, the paradigm sort of shifting now. Yeah, but how, how do we change the general culture of the, the, the perception, one, that, you know, women are the weaker sex, so men should be, you know, a little more gentle with them. And when they do, when women do it, do the things that they do, they should be, they should get away with it. Like, where does the balance strike where that is concerned? Like, when is it okay for a man to get aggressive and say no and not be ridiculed because he's standing for what he believes is right? Like, well, where, where does the balance with, with that strike? Because you see the issue, is on one hand you don't want somebody that is aggressive and too abusive to a situation and then on the other hand a man has to defend himself to see if he end up in a situation like the, the young boy now if it is as provoked as he was he came back and he decided with a cutlass he beaten from her side would he be wrong he was provoked and he was embarrassed well they would they would say he wrong of course he, he take the law into his own hands remember this whole um yeah, as we see recently, this Me Too movement talk a lot about consent, but people don't really talk about consent from the male perspective. A lot of people only only thinking about the female perspective, and where you have men in a getting charge or, or going to court for, for different things. Look at that Johnny Depp situation with the woman, where it came out, and and it's only because of the tapes they realize that. And he was right all along. So and then let me ask a question, him. guys. Let me ask a question. Kian asked him how can we change it? And I'm telling him it's a cultural mindset that's been green from us from young, right? So let me ask him, any one of you all ever get suit from a girl? Sorry, that's what? Cat call or suit. Like and more, see any road yeah. or darky. Yeah. yeah. And more. Yeah. I think so now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, this too, this too, this too, this too, this too, a small thing, you know. Yeah, I feel a little flattered, maybe, you know, a small track in here or whatever. But um, didn't, didn't make anything of it, it didn't bother me. I wasn't offended in any way. Right. But I it was from the first time I remember a, a, a cat calling me straight. That's when I understood how women does feel. Understand really? where I'm coming from. The sense that we always say, well, if you're if you're super girl or a cat caller girl and she calls me first probably she don't find me attractive. But comes it, it really comes out because the girl who was cat calling me and I looked at her she I didn't find she was attractive. <laughs> and then I started to think to myself as a man. Yeah boy, I get through. But then I felt a little disgusted, like so why she had to see me like that now. So I kind of put myself in the shoes of females and I could understand how they will feel violated if you are cat calling them and hence I don't. You understand? But, well, unless we wild and also in effect or something. Not saying it right, um, but you one question I feel just saying that. Did, uh-huh. did, did you do it before the situation? Or like did you cat call any woman before? Um did it experience for you to learn this why I'm trying to get that. Um to be honest, yeah, going up in school, coming walking down the, the, the street from school to city gates, you see girls, you're calling them, you know, you can't call them yet. But I never used to pay it any mind until, you know, it happened to me. And then I was like, hey, I'm feeling good. Yeah, boy. But yeah. then in, in, in well, hindsight, I was like, how oh, she could call me so right? You understand? But so, yeah. There's another topic, um, another point I, I was thinking about because it have a lot of women who they don't feel attractive, they don't feel nice until somebody can call them, until somebody suit them. It's really? a woman who, who looking for that validation. Okay. I think yeah. that's the thing, yeah. There, for me, it's, not, it's no threat. I don't feel threatened when, you know, I get a cat call, but I think for women, you know, especially as we, we say about the, the physicality of the man, you know, you see... I think, uh, I, I think along with that, what, with that chef, the culture that follows a cat call, um, you know, it's either you, if you ignore them, they start a bad cause you. God, you feel your day, your thing, your this, your that, your the other. Yeah, exactly. Um, so when, when, when I get cat called here, I was like, so I was supposed to act now, but like, yeah, I don't walk exactly. normal, I don't walk and smile, I don't wave. I didn't know how to act now. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it was an awkward situation for you. Yeah. But let me ask you something, little bit. If, if, if it was um, somebody that you would find attractive, would you react, have reacted or felt the same way? Eh? What do you mean? Uh, me? You talking to me again? Yeah? I'm going to talk to you a little bit now. You know, you're getting into the normal, <laughs> the normal behavior, what men are supposed to do in those situations. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I get you. So, um, I mean, from what, what I'm getting from this, it, it all depends on the personality of the person in terms of how they react and how they feel. Uh, so, at least one in six men have been sexually abused or assaulted, right? Researchers have found that at least one in six men have experienced sexual abuse or assault. How many men in here? One, two, three, four, five, six. So, based on what Kubel just said, he's the one, right? Um, <laughs> really? <who's... laughs> ah, ah, wow. <laughs> two, two. <laughs> uh, so, whether in childhood or as adults, and this, this is probably a low estimate since it doesn't include uh, non-contact experiences which can also have lasting negative effects. But why is it that men stay silent and what may be the side effects of staying silent when you are abused or you are raped? What, what do you think, uh, you know, is there, is there like an emotional thing? If it happened as a child, do you grow up feeling you know, a particular way about the opposite sex? Could this even change your sexual orientation if it happens at a young age and it's not dealt with? How do you all think? What do you all think about that? It lowers your self-esteem. It yeah. also, yeah, it does. It lowers your self-esteem. It lowers your image of women as well. Um, let's take it for example, and this is not to make him into something that ought to humanize him, but let's take the example of Harkin. Uh, what we learned from the documentaries that we saw about a year and a half ago, was mm-hmm. that himself was abused as a young boy by his older sister and he felt ashamed and that in itself he felt withdrawn and after a while his image of woman was that women were to be conquered 
and especially younger women, younger girls. And he kept his focus there. There was also an example, I think, on TV One, where Kenny Latimore spoke about the fact that he was abused when he was younger, and it affected his self-esteem for a while, to the point that even after he got in his first marriage, when he disclosed it, he was still vulnerable to it, that it hampered his relationship with his wife, and his wife actually disclosed that she thought that he was gay to, well, Wendy Williams. And that scandalized his whole image, his reputation after a while, and it put him into a position where he withdrew from society for a while. So it damages you, you know? And the thing is, the other thing about it is that there's guilt as well. So for instance, if you're sexually assaulted by a woman, you get an erection, you are thinking that, well, maybe it is that I like this, or maybe it is that I didn't, when it's really just a physiological reaction okay. to what you've done to you. It's the same thing with women, where women are being raped and they probably experience an orgasm, but it's really just a physiological reaction to what is being done to them, and it's not an, it's not a signal of approval. Yeah, it's not mm-hmm. consent. I also think that part of it is that men, uh, you see the ego boy? Listen, men do not like the idea of being emasculated. So if they are ever assaulted, so go on and actually make a report to say, hey, I was overpowered by this woman. You know, it doesn't sit too well with the ego. And a lot of times that's why men will be timid to actually report an assault. All right? Or, or for, for, for thinking that they will be ridiculed and made fun of that, you know, what big man like you, so wait now. Bam to you, so wait, then continue, you have your gear or You see those kinds of, of, of retorts, it, it kind of makes, puts a man in a, in, in, a, in a box that he doesn't really want to come and speak out. Because even women, when women provoke and, 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 and caress a man's ego to the sense that if a woman is advancing to a man and he is not receptive of it, the first thing she loses, bam to you, yeah, my come man or? <laughs> you know, and you now saying no, but you feel like it was an ego thing, and it's part of that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, but let, let let's touch on the effects of this from from a younger age, and um, either family members not believing, because that's even a, that's that's a critical issue that we need to to, to touch on. Um, a lot of times, and it happens with young girls, where probably the stepfather would have been interfering with the young girl. And the mother will be like, you know, you're lying on my man, or that's not true, or you're not going to play with my money. I've even heard situation of situations where women have put their children out to live with their grandmothers and their aunts because of accusations by step parents. And the same thing happened to to, to little boys. Um, so what do we do? How what do we do to prevent or uh, help identify those situations? From a, from a from a mental health standpoint, yeah, just to touch on that a little bit, um, what do we do to uh, assist or protect people that we might think um, have been exposed or dealing with something like that? I think uh, I think we yeah I think we need to teach our children from young to speak up about these things, um, to talk and say you know, it, try and assure them that. They're not gonna be in trouble, and it's not gonna be. It's not something that they did wrong. It's not their fault. That kind of thing, like that, to encourage them to speak up and speak about experiences. And we as adults need to start believing children. We need to. We need to start believing children. A lot of times, adults don't believe them. Yeah, because you see, what I want to get to that, fellas, is something that. Well, yeah. Uh, what I get in our fellas is something that Kibbles mentioned uh, more than once. Is the culture change, and the culture change starts with the children. And yeah. we 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 are at that point now where we have our families, we have our children. So what I'm trying to get out is that the culture change that we're trying to create, it needs to start from from that age. So we need to start listening to them, uh, paying attention to who they are around. You know, look for the simple signs because that's very yeah. important. You know, because because you, you don't want to end up having a, a R. Kelly on your hands, as, as the example that, that, that Anthony gave. So, you know, I just wanted to touch on that a little bit. 
And so before you know, on, Kian, before you move on, I think I think we need to address that a little further because it's a real it's a real thing. Um, I would have known, not personally, but I would have heard of instances where, as you said, the the child being put out. Now, this stepfather, let's say, coming into the the home, he would be the main breadwinner, and he's providing, he's providing for the the wife and the children, but he has an eye for the daughter. And we would have heard about incidents where they are actually you know, leaving it as is, the mother that is, to ensure that the food is on the table, right? And there are many instances, especially in, in, the, in the, as we say, disenfranchised or impoverished communities where sexual assault of both men and, and, and women, young boys and young girls, um, is being played out because the family has or seems to have no other way of bringing in income. So, as you rightly said, we need to listen to the children, we need to protect our children and we also need to have avenues for them to get the message out. Yeah, we, we need to validate their feelings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we with the technology to... age, if we could get some kind of app where they could secretly report, but then hmm, I don't it's too much again to right now, but it definitely also, needs to be addressed. Also, um, yeah chef, we also need to look at the fact that um there are instances where um women or girls put um sort of I, I don't want to say lie but they sort of step men up it's have instances where women does get set up where men does think okay this girl is a um she into me or whatever this and that and next thing you know when you when people find out the girl does go and cry rape the girl does go and say she and was she was consenting and that one is why i said not necessarily believe but actually do your proper yeah. investigation because you know anybody mm-hmm. can put anybody up um another thing is um i think that women fall victim to the same um social conditioning because just as men believe that they are supposed to be all powerful and they're supposed to be um the aggressor and supposed to be you know no means no women aren't trained that way women believe that well let me take it back. Generally, most women believe that when they say no, no means no, and a man should respect it. But when the man says no, they're thinking, nah, man, he must be just plain thing. Really, and truly, they were conditioned to believe that men always want sex. And that's the primary thing on a man's mind. So when a man says no, it doesn't really compute in their mind that, you know, he really not onto this thing. As far as she is concerned, he really mean yes, you know, sort of going ahead regardless. Something wrong with he, something wrong yeah. with he. Yeah, I'm not coming yeah. matter what, not to so you. So fun, so fun. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, but the reality is that that's not always the case, you know. Um, you work uh, a 16 hour shift and you reach home and you're tired, you, you really necessarily might not want sex. So, you know, no would mean no. Um. Do y'all think that that's so? Yeah, quite. Yeah, okay. Yeah. What do you want? Do y'all agree with me? No. <laughs> we are married. We have a lot of married men in here too. Eh? So <laughs> y'all give your view if you want. Um, one of the questions that that we that I mentioned that we didn't really touch on is the the fact that do y'all think that um sexual assault can change your 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 orientation, your sexual orientation? Yes. You do you think it can lead you to? I believe any sort of trauma could affect your mind um, from a young age, even in adulthood. You know, um, where those kind of things could give you, could give a man or even a woman a lot of fear when it comes to sex. They, where a man might, might after he get abused or assaulted, he might feel confident or want to talk to women. He might be afraid of them, especially if he's not physically big. You know, mm. I'm actually seeing it another way in, in terms of not sexual trauma, but a pleasant sexual experience. Um, uh, pre- 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 where's the word? Prebubescent? Where's the word for before adolescence? <laughs> prebubescent. I think it's prebubescent, right? The young male, um, and he has an uncle or stepfather who is treat him well, he buys him gifts, you know, and suppose that that person now introduces him to the sexual act. And it's a very pleasant experience. He had his first ejaculation or something like that. And you know, he thinks this is it. This mm-hmm. this is the ultimate. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad experience to be sexual assault. It is an adult and a minor. 
even though the experience might seem good to the youth man, it is still assault. Yeah. And hmm. that is one of the things that we have to be careful to let people differentiate. That sexual assault isn't necessarily correlated to your sexual orientation. Because, and it might not even correlate to the person who is perpetuating, who is perpetrating the act on the victim. For instance, so the uncle that may sexually assault the, his nephew, he might not be gay, but is actually an act of power. It's right. similar to what may happen with me occur in jail. Men may not be gay, but because they have to get some form of ease, they may find somebody weaker that they can dominate, that they can yeah. basically have sex with until they come out. Mm. And it's, a power, it's more of power than it is one of sexual orientation. Yeah, that's another aspect. That's another aspect that we have yet to explore. Sometimes perpetrators, especially adults who sexually abuse boys, will use the physiological response to maintain secrecy and will tell them, I know you like it, eh? and that will play yeah. something in the young person's head, especially in a young boy's head that, well, maybe I'm gay. When really and truly, he probably doesn't like, he's not that way, he's not wired that way. And it actually scares him away from intimacy with women. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, you know, you want to always remember that if you've been sexually abused or assaulted, that it's not your fault. Facts. And, facts. you know, the, the, the natural reaction, body reaction, which would be like a, um erection in, in the case of men, does not mean that you invited unwanted sexual activity, you know, even ejaculation. So, um, don't feel that it's who you are and you really like it. It's not. It's really exactly. Isn't. Well, yes. thank you, Adam. And conversely to, or contradictory to what we may have said in rape culture part one, where we're looking at the woman point of view, I think that the misconceptions as it pertains to men needs to be um, understood because there's a misconception out there that males can't be harassed, males can't be victims of rape, and women never perpetuate sexual violence. And, and we need to address that because when we're looking at rape culture, just as I mentioned before, just as much as men need to check their behavior, women need to understand that because of how society has been structured, that it does not give them a pass as well to, to, to perpetrate or to do things that are what they wouldn't want for themselves. Like Iran, I think, mentioned in part one, when they were in the Fed and the girl passing down, or a cannibal, Tuesday, whatever, and the girl passing and she grabbing everybody's crutch, right? I mean, that, that has happened on numerous occasions in fact, women passing, grabbing men's chests. I think I was with Iran self, I promise Iran is the problem. I was with Iran <laughs> self, <laughs> and we were walking through the crowd, and this young lady grabbing everybody's chest and watching you, and, and I was like, well, what trouble is this? If I grab back your chest, you know, all the police come and beat me up, you understand? And if I had gone in that same fetish, the officer, this lady assaulted me, and she grabbed her chest, the officer would have watched me like, what? is wrong with you <laughs> you understand so yeah. i think that we need to clear up those misconceptions as well and we, we can't um condone double standards it's Definitely. funny eh? Definitely. it's funny when when we talk about it we'll be laughing eh? i mean it just goes to show it just goes to show the double standard yeah, yeah. because we culture that way to laugh at it to make, to make light of the situation when yeah um, definitely really because one, one is if a, if, if, if a workmate, right, coming come in to work and he's trying to, to talk to you and tell you, boy, you believe last night uh, 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 my wife raped me? Were you, how are you responding to that? Really well, and truly, honestly. Like, honestly, my first reaction, I ain't gonna lie and tell you, I, I might laugh, depending on who the coach <laughs> is, I might laugh. But when I really think about it, if I realize that he's serious, I might say, okay, all right, if he really want to talk about it, you know, discuss, try and discuss so, it with so him. Then, so, then that change, so then that change you to start with us, right? That change well, definitely course, needs to yeah. start with us. Yeah. But I'm being honest. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, I get that. 
I remember an incident with myself, Lyman, by uh, a some spot in Arima, boy. Rossi, I think it's close to your side, boy. And then, you know, fellas, we Lyman, we drinking years ago. Eh? And this, I was two, three girls in the group, boy. And this girl, and you know, maybe, anyway, let me leave that out. And when she came up to me, you know, so she looking, ting, ting, music blasting, and grab my penis, right? And you know, it's like, Gain it look now like you're supposed to be enjoying that. But I get so upset that that thing spoiled my whole night. Eh? Spoil my whole. And the virgins laughing, oh chef boy! <laughs> and it's you a get big joke for the horse that would die. And it's a joke, eh? But I was seriously upset. Lime stuck for me there, you know. Um I don't know, eh? I don't know. I mean, she wasn't the most unattractive girl, but I think it's just the my personal space, boy, and, and you know. It was really I don't do me that, don't do me that. I didn't enjoy it. I didn't mm. enjoy it. Rossi, that's all I remember. I understand what you're saying, well, Chef, because it yeah. happened to me at a time where um, I was up in Belange with my parents, with my family, and I was walking towards the beach and it had some cars playing music and some women dancing and things. Now, my mother and father were right behind me, and two young ladies came and jammed me up and started to rock it up on me. And I just did, I freeze, I was like, but my parents heard me this real embarrassing, you know? And that real that bother me, that real bother me. You know, time and place for everything. You didn't ask for that. Yeah, I, did, I definitely didn't ask for that. No, it was some nice woman, I don't get my wrong, there was nice, but again, time and place. I would, <laughs> I, it was uncomfortable. It definitely was uncomfortable for myself. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Mm. yeah. you were gonna say you were saying something about talking about it. And I think yeah, that's I think a good that, point. You could close I, on that point. I think men need to continue to speak up about it. Don't think that you know, they are being emasculated. And that's reported. <laughs> the only way I think it probably might shift where it has started to be taken seriously is when men actually start making the reports and they realize, hey, something really up here, we need to look into this. So, report it. This just, and I just want to make this clear, this is this is not a tit for tat. Um, we would have done the, the rape culture episode a couple of weeks ago, and our inboxes would have been filled up with, with men saying that we, we didn't touch on, on their issues as well and rape culture affects men as well. So we had to, we had to balance it as low gents. We had to give the male point of view as well. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't get someone to come forward tonight, but we know there are serious cases taking place out there. So yeah. um, we had to reach out, we had to support each other. We can't be laughing when we're talking about this kind of rape culture and sexual abuse of men right it's a difficult thing to change a culture but it can be done and it starts with us Definitely. Right, guys? So, well said, well said. looking forward to hear your feedback in the comments and thanks again for supporting us lotions out like follow and share the content as you always do thanks for the support